Hello everyone, I am back again with another uh, video. Uh, this time I'm going to work uh, on a loose sheet of paper. This is from an Art by Malena journal and I'm just flipping through it to see if I've got a page with a background that I would, might like to use but I couldn't find one. So I chose a blank one to work on. Um, you know that I like to do faces, so uh, today I'm g going to do a face, but if you are not uh, confident in um, making a face, uh, whatever, whimsical, uh, weird, uh, scary or uh, realistic, um, this is a nice way to get started and um, I like to do this. Um, I've done a lot uh, in um, the beginning of my facing, uh, face making. So uh, I'll show you and I'll tell you about it uh, later in the video. First we need to create a background. Um, I'm going through my pile of um, uh, jelly prints. They are um, tissue papers and um, just regular paper that I used for jelly printing and these are um, masks that I made from paper. I followed a father challenge um, just the other week and uh, this was from Drew Steinbrecher um, if I pronounce it right but he showed how to make your own stencils and masks the easy way with no costs so um, I kept them to use later on so I chose a few papers and now I'm gluing them down with um, just a semi-gloss uh, gel medium by Golden. Um, I bought these for very cheap and I thought I might just uh, use them up before I start on any other glue. It's not that glossy so that's just fine. So you can see uh, these are some handmade or hand colored pages. The one with the letters are just simple. Um, um, book papers with um, paint on it, uh, letters with paint, and the circles are just um, using ink, uh, acrylic ink on tissue paper and just create random doodles. So after finishing the background dried completely and then I go in with my uh, face and I'm starting with just a model out of a magazine and here I am just measuring on how large I want it to be because I do want it to be not too realistic just a bit whimsical and colorful so I chose her um, she is a little bit uh, andronogist, uh, andronogist, you know, and uh, um, she looks a little bit like uh, a male. Um, she's a girl, obviously, but so you see that I start out with light paint, and I'm just going around. There is not much shading in her face. So if you want to do this, just start with um, um, a picture that has a lot of shading. Um, so you can see where you put the light colors and the dark colors. I'm just going to do something on this page, just what I like. And I already had a few paints on my palette and I d didn't want to uh, throw them away. So I chose to um, use those that I've got. So I'm just going to tell you what, these are Dina Wakely uh, paints, acrylic paints. Really love them. There are uh, small bottles of them so and you don't need that much. So um, I've got on my palette the ruby, a ruby color, uh, a little bit of carnation and uh, that's kind of like a pearlish color. Um, I've got an ocean, uh, of course titanium white, I've got cheddar on it and I think I'm going to use fur, uh, that's a green one, uh, later on and those colors are mixed into the colors that you see me use. So the ocean goes with the red and makes the purple, um, you know, and if you don't know just watch a good, good um, color theory video. I must say that I do know a little bit about color theory because I um, followed the course from um, Everything Art um, 
from Cassia Avery, I think that she's called. So uh, that was very helpful, but um, I don't seem to remember those steps uh, all the time. So I just do what I like, basically. And I know which colors make mud, so I avoid them. Um, but that's basically it. I just mix them and if I don't like it, I try to mix in with white or with another color. And if I like the color that is on my palette at that time, I'm going to use it. So, well, that's the way I do it. I just do what I like. I don't overthink the colors. I don't, I'm not bothered with it. So I skipped a lot because this painting took me about an hour. So fiddly. Uh, uh, I am uh, how I'm going to say it. I know I'm I'm just that fiddly. So uh, um, you see, I mixed in the cheddars. I mixed in a little bit of green, and now I didn't know what to do anymore. So I chose to use a solid black pencil. So no water solubles, just. Um, a simple one. I don't know which brand it is. I think it's a Derwent um, pencil. You can see it at the end of the pencil. That's a Derwent brand. Um, so um, I'm using it to just contour a little bit because it was too much like a male and I didn't want that. Now I'm going in with a little bit of dark red. I mix the red with a bit of green to get um, a very deep red uh, colored. It's a little bit dark. So I'm just going to go in and uh, constantly, as I said in other videos, trying to say to myself, don't do too much, don't overthink it, it does not have to be realistic, just play around. So I did, and you see I threw in some green around the eyes, a little bit more shading, and I thought, okay, it needs more than what I've got, so make it whimsical or a clown or whatever I like so I'm going in with the ruby I really like that color I just bought it the other day because I saw someone um, use it in a in a video and I thought oh I need that so um, and I really like that color I'm not that fond of a red but uh, I do like this one it's a bit pinkish so I'm just using my fingers to spread it around just a little bit to give him her a, a, a little blush and then I go in with the lips I didn't like the lips so <laughs> go in with the booby again just to do it ag uh, um, again again and again <laughs> story of my life um, so that's the way you do it just look at what you like and if I s if you had a picture with a lot of shading you know exactly where you need to put the dark colors and where you need to do the light colors and then just play around and in the end uh, you'll see it later you can't recognize the the lady that was on the magazine uh, picture so um, using a very s small brush to put in the eye um, the white of the eyes eyes and um, just go and make it a little bit more um, happy one because he she looks very sad at the moment and I didn't want to do that I just needed a little bit of color and then just put a nice face on it so I colored the neck um, there were some shells on her neck I just gave them a little bit of color as you can see and then I still keep going in with all kinds of colors and um, at one moment, one moment I said to myself, so now I'm just going to stop because I can go on for hours and hours and hours. And, um, well, I decided to stop uh, at one moment and then go on with the uh, next step in this uh, journal page. So I um, decided to stop it. And then this is a piece of my blotting paper. Um, you know that I've got these large blotting papers and I fill them up with leftover paints. And then I go in and just give a little bit of a finishing touch by adding some marks and some scratches and additional colors if I like. And then I cut it up into smaller pieces, as you can see here. And I thought that would be a nice hairdo for um, her. She is going to go uh, to an her. 
um, and I didn't mind that she had a large forehead and I ju just left it like that because I like the way the, the colors popped uh, behind her so you can see that I cut out a piece of that um, paper that we made the background and um, I'm just placing her on that um, background and I am going to make the hair stand out just a little bit just by using the same pencil again let me see if I can find it because um, um it is a yeah a Derwent color soft and then the black the black color so I'm using that one and um, just um, following the outline of her hair and you can see it instantly stands out from the background and that's what I wanted so um, and then at this moment I just left it for a few uh, uh, minutes and then I thought okay the shoulders are weird I did cut a piece of her body so I needed um, a, like a dress or something and the colors from her hair should uh, come um, down just a little bit so it, it look, looked better <laughs> composition wise um, and so I just took a little bit of that same uh, uh, background paper that blotting paper and just made a little dress you saw me put a p uh, um, some uh, black or oh, transparent gesso on the page because I wanted to come in with my Prismacolor pencils just to emphasize a little bit of the color some of them were just a little bit uh, weird or not bright enough and so I just come in with a bright blue I did the lips a little bit a little bit on her cheeks um, and Prisma uh, goes on top of almost anything but I find that it, you know, on acrylic it doesn't do that well and you can smear it and take it off so that's why I do put a piece of uh, uh, put a, a layer of transparent gesso on it just uh, to make sure it has a little bit of tooth so I can paint on it so uh, a little bit of color on her necklace using the same paper again and then I go in with my Posca pens to um, make sure there are enough fun details and to make it look even better because I'm really liking it already but it needs a little bit of spark here and there and it doesn't have to be that obvious but if you look at it closely you can see the details and it just brightens up some of the areas on your journal page I love using POS because I bought a set of these bright colors I don't need more of them uh, but they are lovely I think um, then I go in with, uh, this is um, an Inktense pencil, a black one, because I do love my shading. You know that. I like shading. I like black lines. Um, I like a bit of a dark feel. So it was way too white on the back, in my, in my opinion. So just going around with that watercolor uh, Inktense pencil. And in this case as well, I put down some transparent gesso so that helps really good so I see that I skipped a, a little bit because that uh, ink inktense pencil you need to go in it with water to just dilute it a little bit and make um, yeah um, paint around your image to create the shading you can see that it's darker here and there and then I go in with the text, the Dina Wakely text, and I really like this text. It says, slowly I began to see the wonderful paths that opened for me. Um, oh, where it is. Uh, opened when you accept yourself. So I thought it was a very good quote and it fits me uh, very well. Now, last details and then I am done. Um, it took me two hours in total to do this page and I loved every second of it so I'm going to do it again and maybe I will film it uh, for you so you can see what I'm doing now this is it um, I hope you uh, liked uh, this video if you did give me a thumbs up and follow if you like and uh, 
uh, if you have an idea on what I should do or what you would like to see, just leave me a comment uh, underneath this video. So thank you for watching everyone and I wish you a very, very wonderful summer. Bye bye. Bye bye.